Hey everybody, DM Jim here and welcome to another episode of Game Terrain Engineering. I actually didn't think I would get this video out in time. It has been an, just an insanely crazy week. I had a writing project, game related, drop in my lap that had a very short um, deadline. And then on top of that, uh, if you've been paying attention to the news, there was a Hurricane Michael that um, hit the uh, Florida Panhandle, which is where I grew up. I live in Atlanta now, but I have a lot of friends and a lot of family that live all along that coastline. I've been very worried for them. My family's fine, but I have a lot of friends who are without power, uh, low on water, things like that. So for the past few days, I've kind of been spending a lot of time uh, communicating with contacts in Florida, running around Atlanta to Costco and various places trying to gather supplies so that I can um, hand them off. There are people that... Um, uh, if you grew up in the hurricane area, you know about this. You know, uh, a lot of times we rely on people in the surrounding areas who do have gas and that kind of stuff to gather the supplies, and then somebody will usually rent a truck and bring. You know, you you have a gathering point, you load off your supplies, and everybody heads down there. Long story short, um, I've just been extremely busy trying to help out in that area, um, and I just haven't had time to devote this week to the channel, but. I have about an hour, hour and a half uh, of free time that I'm going to shoot this video and I'm going to tell you uh, a couple things I'm going to do in this video. One, I want to introduce you to a new game, very briefly, and the reason I want to introduce you to that new game is because it comes with some miniatures that are going to lead into the second part of this video, which is I want to show you a new technique. It's not, I, it's not a new technique. Something new for me that I've never tried before, but I'm completely blown away by it. It's a technique for painting, and again, not new. But before I show you what it is, let me tell you about the game. The game is called Wildlands. Now, those of you who know me know I am a big fan of Osprey games. Frostgrave, Gaslands, um, oh, I knew I was going to go blank on it. They have a bunch. They put out a lot of skirmish war games. I'm a huge fan. It is, in my opinion, it is a micro skirmish game because everything you need to play this game is in the box, okay? My oldest son, age 11, and I have played a few games of this, and I want him to at least try war games and skirmish war games. He's tried Frostgrave, but he was a, it was a couple years ago, and he just didn't quite get it. So I introduced him to this, and the reason I like Wildlands, there's a lot of reasons, and one of those reasons is that it doesn't require terrain. It comes with this fold-out, I hope I can fit all this in, this fold-out board, okay? This board has terrain printed on it. You have a ruins terrain right here, ruins, and then you have a dungeon. This game is a great way to introduce younger players or novice players, any age, to the concepts of wargaming. You start out with a warband or a crew or whatever you want to call it. Now, in, in um, Wildlands, your miniatures consist of five miniatures. Now, in some cases, that number may go up or down one or two. You, you don't roll dice. You use cards. Your crew has a series of cards, one for the different characters that, that in your, or the, the different miniatures that you'll use. And then you have action cards that you are used to define what that character can do, what a defense against it is, like if they're attacking, can you defend against that attack? It's all visual, okay? Symbols that make it very fast to play. This game plays quickly. Let's see the box. I know the box is wrong. I know the box is wrong. The box tells you that you can play a game. It's on the bottom. The box tells you that you can play a game in 30 to 60 minutes. I will tell you that once you get the rules under your belt, you can play a game in less than 30 minutes. It plays that quick. Now, they're probably assuming that there's going to be four players because this game, this box comes with enough miniatures and enough cards for uh, up to, was it four or five? I've only played with two. It's four, up to four players. I'm going to hold, I'm going to try not to angle this here. You can see some of the miniatures here, and I want to hold these up to you. Now, the other thing I like about this game is, other than the fact that the board game requires no terrain, and it's not a dice related, it uses these cards, um, the miniatures come unpainted. 
And you may be thinking, oh great, I gotta paint my miniatures for it to look great. It doesn't. These miniatures, they're extremely detailed. And I will take some up close photos of these and put them at the end of the video. But these are given a wash, a simple, dark, I would say it's a black wash. It might, it's a bit hard for me to tell. It could be a brown wash, but I think it is a black wash. And I'm gonna hold some up here. The wash is incredible. Just the, gr just the gray piece, the miniatures and the wash. And I know this isn't doing them justice. My holding them up to the camera and the focusing is not going to do these justice. I will shoot some photos of these in bright light so you can see. This is what the second part of this episode is going to be about. I recently had a D&D &D game um, and because this week's been crazy, I didn't have any time to paint the miniatures uh, that I made for that night's session. Uh, I came home, uh, got my kids home from school. I had like an hour, hour and a half. I had already primed them dark gray. And this game just popped in my head. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to give them a wash. So uh, what I did was they, they had skeleton heads. And so I did paint the skeletons uh, a, a desert sand, which is a very light, uh, it's, a, it's a sort of a cream color. And then I gave it the wash. And the results to me blew me away. And it made me realize that if you don't like to paint miniatures, all you have to do is prime them and then give them a wash and they do look good. But if you're willing to just take one or two colors and just put it maybe on a weapon, like a sword and the face, you don't have to do the face. If it's, a, if it's not a skeleton, uh, you may wanna do maybe the boots or a belt. All it takes to make these things look really, really cool is just one or two colors. And when I say color, you could do you could use black or white, okay, instead of a true color. Um, and then apply the wash. And I'm going to show you how, in my opinion, I just think it turns out incredible. I still want to paint my most of my minis, but this gives me an option for when I don't have time to paint a full set or even one. Uh, just putting a little bit of paint on it and then giving it a wash. The wash dries in like 15, 20 minutes. It is an amazing result and I'm going to show you. Let's get to the table. I am going to um, put together amenity. I'm going to I'm going to kit bash. Do you know what kit bashing is? Kit bashing is where you take pieces from various sprues that that figures come on and you create a custom one. And I'm going to show you that I'm going to I'm going to kit bash a miniature real fast, prime it Give it a little bit of paint and a wash, and I'm gonna show you the result. Let's get to the table. I am going to kit bash a miniature, and I don't know what I'm gonna do. I've looked at these and just pulled these off the shelf. Uh, I have some bodies, some human heads, uh, some skeleton heads, uh, various skeleton heads, and lots of weapon choices. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what I did the other night. I created a uh, I guess I can go ahead and tell you now. It's called Bloody Bones. It's a new monster from the Kobold Press cr uh, Creature Codex. It just came out. I grabbed a copy. I was looking through it. It is a, it's half skeleton, half zombie. Like the skin is still on it, but the skull has been totally, you know, there's no skin on the skull. But there's another interesting part to this creature. Uh, that I won't tell you about because some of you may want to use it as a surprise for your players. But I'm going to make me a Bloody Bones. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with trimming one of these body bases off. And, and you know, they're all, they all look good. I'm just going to, I'm going to do this one right here. Okay. Now these bodies come with no heads and no arms. And they also come uh, on a small base here. So I'm going to trim that off. And some of you are probably gonna gasp when you see how I do this. I'm, I'm gonna be very careful here. I'm using a very sharp blade and I'm just going to cut the body from the base using a little wiggle. Okay, that one's gone. Gone, all right, let's do this one. Let's see, I'll do it from this side. You want to be careful and not cut the toes. So I'm, all right, now it's a little rough. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my, I have a um, file, if I can find it. Here it is. And I'm just going to file the bottom of the feet where I, where I cut, get, rough them up a little bit. Okay. 
and I'm gonna rough around the shape of the foot to get any of that excess plastic off that doesn't look good. See the back, can you see that white bit right there? Hope you can see that. I'm gonna file that off. And roughing the bottom of the feet will also help with the super glue to help attach it to a base. Then I'm gonna get the pieces off where I cut, where I trimmed the body off the sprue. That's where one arm was. Here's another one right there. I don't know if you can see that, but just a little sanding or filing. And roughing it up will help the glue attach the arms. So now I've got the base. Let me get a base and go ahead and glue this down. What did I do with my bases? Next, I'm gonna take a base and I've just got some pre-painted here. Here's one right here. I'm gonna take this one. And while I'm working on the arms, I'll let the super glue dry on the feet. It doesn't take long. Uh, so just a little drop there, a little drop there. And normally I would spray a little bit of the, uh, the, the accelerator on here. But I've since learned that if you've got two flat feet, if you just, or <laughs> two flat feet, if you just push this down really hard and count to about 20, uh, it, it's enough and it will stand on its own. I'm just gonna keep talking. But what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get a human arm for the right arm and a skeleton arm for the left or vice versa. Just, I'm gonna take a look and see what I have. And I'm still holding this down, putting pressure on it. Come on, you can, you can do it. Dry glue. Uh, and then I'll work on the head. The head is gonna be a skeleton. Now these parts all aren't designed for this body. There we go. Um, they're not all designed for this body. So let me take a look here. So for the right arm, I have a skeleton arm holding a morning star, a scimitar, and a sword. Hmm, I like the <laughs> I like the morning star, but I do like that scimitar. I'm gonna go with the scimitar. I'm gonna trim that. That is going to be the right arm. And again, these will have to be uh, filed just a little bit just to make sure they attach properly. Now, the skeleton arm has a little hollow inside where it would match to a ball. This body does not have that. So um, I'm just gonna have to make sure the glue, to glue it really well and make sure it sticks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the, uh, the curve of the scimitar sanded out so it doesn't look bad. And then where was that? It was on the ball right here. I can just sand that just a little bit. Now the connection is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna rough that up just a little bit for the glue. And this is going to be the right arm. It may look a little weird, but I'll give it a shot. And then for the left arm, I need a human arm. And I'm looking at this one. Uh, he's got a sword already, so maybe a dagger in the other hand. I don't see, come on, do you have a dagger? Oh, wait a minute, is that a left arm? There's a left arm with a dagger right there. All right, good enough. I pin that one off. Sand that down a little bit. I say sand, but you know what I mean, file it down. And then I'm gonna rough up where it would connect. Like that, all right. So let's see, did this take? Yeah. So I'm gonna put the, the, the left arm here. Let me go ahead and do that. So I am going to put the drop of glue here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some of the accelerant on the arm here. And stick it on. Let's see if it works. They say to hold it for about 10 seconds. Not bad. Can you see that? All right, so I have a human arm attached. I do not like the smell of this stuff. It smells herbal. I don't know if that's the right word for it. it. Has a, you're probably not supposed to breathe it. I use it very rarely, so I'm not too concerned. All right, so there's that. Let me look what the skeletal arm is gonna look like. Not too, not too bad. The hand is much bigger, but I think it looks kind of cool. So what I'm gonna do is put a drop of glue here. put the accelerant on this little piece right here. All right. And 
then I'm gonna have him raising that. So let's go, let's go with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ha <laughs> ha! That's cool. All right, now we still need a head. And I may have put the sword a little too close to the body, but boy, it's 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 on there solid now. All right, so let's find the head. The only skeleton heads I have, I have this one. Do I have any others? I have that one with a with a skull. I mean, with a helmet. That one looks weird. I don't like that one. Do I have any more? Oh, here's some more skeleton heads. Uh, that that might work. Okay, um, I'm going to use that middle one right, well, no, I'm going to use this one right here. I'm just going to spin it out, twist it out so it breaks off. And then I will sand it down a little bit, put spurs on the side. Okay, and then this side, oh, this side didn't look bad. All right, so I have a skull. So let me see. This one's going to be a little tricky because, again, the skull is designed for a little ball joint, and this one is just a, a place to set a flat head. So this one may be a little tricky. All right, so the glue is going to go on the neck right there. All right. And the super glue doesn't dry so fast, so I've got a few seconds. I don't like touching this. I'm going to have to go wash my hands, but I'm going to spray the, spray the skull. I'm just gonna hold it here. All right, I'm gonna let him dry, then I'll prime him. All right, so I have the figure painted. Uh, correction, I have it primed in a gray primer, as you can see here. And it looks really good. Um, I love this skeleton arm on this side and this bulky armored arm on this side. I don't know, just uh, it, it just fits. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to apply desert sand paint to just the skull. I think I'm gonna paint the scimitar silver and I think that's it. I may paint the boots uh, brown or black. And that is the only painting I'm gonna do on this. And the reason for that is, um, at this point, I thought I might just apply wash and just show you this, but I want to show you what I discovered was that even if you take just a primed mini and just do add a little bit of color, and it doesn't have to be color, it could be just black on the boots or a white sash or something, just something to break up the gray. And if you can do that after you apply that wash, it, it's, it looks intentional. It looks like you intentionally chose not to paint it and keep it very simple. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, when I get done with this, I'll show you what I mean, because uh, I, I did some of these last week for my D&D game, and I didn't, I, I just, on those, I just painted the skull, and I got some compliments on them uh, because uh, they were so, so simple. Now, I put too much paint on this, so I'm going to use the brush to take some off. And I'm not going to go crazy with paint here. I'm not giving it two coats. I'm just giving it one coat. Just, that's it. All right, let me pull some paint off here. I want to get it out of the eye sockets and out of the teeth. Give, give the uh, wash somewhere to go. There we go. All right. So next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the sword. Let's see, I'm going to use gunmetal. I don't want it to be silver, silver. I'm going to use gunmetal here, just a drop. Okay. And all I'm going to do is just hit, hit the scimitar with a slightly different color. Okay, I want to get inside the edge here. And I think I'm also going to get the, is that the pommel? I think that's what they call that. Just the bottom part here. I'm not even really being careful with this, although yeah, I guess I am. I don't want it to be too messy. But uh, just the pommel. 
and the sword. So I have two different two different colors there, and I think the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the boots brown. Let's see. I'll go with just a standard brown, nothing fancy. Uh, Harvest brown. So I'm just going to do that, and then I'll hit this with the wash and let it dry, and we'll see what it looks like. All right. So the boots, just just a little bit of brown. Okay. I'm putting it on pretty thick. I didn't water the paint down as you saw. That's okay because I know I'm going to add the wash and I'm going to thin this out anyway by just using what I have already put on there and just spreading it around. I'm not going to re-wet the brush with any more brown. Just going to use what what I have. Okay. Some of that gray is coming through, and that's okay. I think it's going to help. What the wash is really doing, or what I think it did, it, it aged it aged the piece, obviously, but it just gave it the color mixed with the wash makes it just look like a very simple mini, nothing fancy, and that's really what I was going for. Okay. So far, so good. All right, that's it. That's all the color that I'm gonna do to this guy, okay? Skull, scimitar, boots. I'm gonna let that dry, and then I'm gonna hit it with my special blend that I mix up <laughs> called the Wash of Darkness. Special made in the laboratory of James Floyd Kelly. Let me let that dry, and I'm gonna hit it with this. So that's it. That is how I kit bashed a creature called the Bloody Bones right here. This is a creature that came from the Creature Codex, a new monster compendium from Kobold Press. I don't want to give anything away, uh, especially if you DMs have not um, introduced this particular creature to your players, but I just wanted to give you a quick one. It's right there, the Bloody Bones, right there. Um, the Bloody Bones is a challenge rating three creature, and uh, I don't want to give away the secret to it, but I added, um, the last bit I added to this was a little blood on the skull. That's how it gets its name, but I won't tell you what the, uh, what the special feature is. So anyway, apologies for the, the lateness in getting this video up. Uh, everybody in Florida is good. My family's good. Uh, my friends are good. They seem to be re have uh, restored power to a lot of um, the the, the uh, coast, which is good. Uh, food and water and gasoline are all flowing in, so um, things are good down there. And but again, I do apologize. I just uh, had to take care of some business there. So anyway, I hope you like this. Um, I do like kit bashing. I don't do it very often, but I I really should do it some more. Uh, I have some more ideas for some minis, and this thing is full of ideas. If you've ever watched uh, Jeremy over at Black Magic Craft, he's been doing this lately. He's taking some of the creatures that he likes out of uh, the Creature Codex, and there's another one called Tome of Beasts, and I have that one too. Um, you know, I'm trying to introduce my players, or not introduce, I'm trying to have my players come up against creatures that they don't know what they are, and uh, this one surprised them. They really... Once, uh, once the special ability kicked in on this one, um, they they were a little worried, and there were two or three of these on the on the uh, tabletop. So anyway, give it a shot. Put together a mini. Uh, it doesn't have to be a kit bash one; just a, a standard mini. Paint it uh, gray, prime uh, prime it in gray, and then give it a dark wash and see what you think. You may not agree with me, but I just love the way this looks. The boots are brown, but that but the gray came through and the wash just sort of aged them. Same with the skull and the weapon. There's there's color there, but it's really the wash is doing most of the work by bringing out the detail. And I didn't have to spend, as you saw, I did this in real time on this video. You saw that I was, you know, gluing it and painting and everything. Um, it didn't take, took less than an hour. And that's including dry time for the primer and the paint and the wash. So definitely something to give a shot. Listen, this is DM Jim, and I'll see you in the next episode.